uh, I'm an uh, environmental law student here in this institute. Oh, you student. actually got yeah. more students. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So uh, uh, we were told about this Montreal protocol about ozone yeah. depletion uh, and you know how successful it was, and we have this Kyoto protocol which is not so successful and it involves you know the whole world. Uh, so what in your uh, reason, what in your uh, perception is the you know the failings of uh, you know the Kyoto protocol and how? the Montreal Protocol already succeeded and how, you know, yeah. this is not succeeding. Well, there are two major reasons why Montreal Protocol succeeded and why Kyoto didn't. The first is the Montreal Protocol was about a very limited set of gases, you know, that deplete the ozone layer. Whereas Kyoto is about everything that creates a greenhouse gas, which is such diverse activities. So that's one. The second was Montreal was negotiated before WTO started to change the world's economic paradigm. And Montreal was negotiated, as I would say, in, in a safe ecological space. Yeah. So in those days, Margaret Thatcher, one of the worst prime ministers, led the <coughs> charge for the Montreal Protocol. But today, if you notice what the Kyoto Protocol is, and if I've got a whole section again in my book on this, it ended up being about carbon trading, which ended up being about emitters continuing to emit and making money out of it. So our Lakshmi Mittal has earned one billion pounds annually out of increasing pollution by doing deals on emissions trading. It's, it's a bigger scam than the subprime crisis. And they're talking of creating a one trillion dollar market out of not stopping to pollute. So it was all about favoring the polluters, giving them the right to continue to pollute, and in addition, giving them the right to the atmosphere that they were polluting, taking rights away from ordinary people because, in my view, the atmosphere is a commons, and these rights privatize the atmosphere, and they are Price Waterhouse Cooper has actually done a report saying emission trading permits are equivalent to patents and copyright. That you get a piece of the sky, and then you can add your weights to it. So, and I really do believe the globalization paradigm is what has weakened any international treaty and subverted it to go in a direction other than what it was aimed to be. Same is happening with the Biodiversity Convention on which I've worked a lot. Today, instead of, being, instead of stopping two things, which is genetically engineered crops which are a, polluting, a pollutant at the genetic level, or biopiracy, the stealing of knowledge, what the protocol negotiations are now doing is smoothing up the release of GMOs and smoothing up the biopiracy through what are called access and benefit sharing arrangements. And we've just released a new 5,000 list of biopiracy patents. 5,000 patents on India's traditional knowledge and everyday plants that we use for food or healing. So that's really it. WTO is the problem. And even though WTO hasn't moved in the Doha round, its paradigm is still active through bilateral agreements, through autonomous liberalization as it's called. So you know how our government doesn't need a WTO pressure today to liberalize mining, to have toxic dumping, um, and that's really the challenge. The economic paradigm is the problem.